All right, so that's how we form a patio. That's about eight by 25. When we get back, we'll tie the matter rebar in it. Right now, the people got to use the door to walk in and out. We don't want them walking over the rebar, so we'll get back to port, stamp it, we'll put the rebar in it that day. Hey, YouTube, we're back on our stamp job. We've got an 8 by 25 stamp concrete patio we're doing right here at this job. We were over here the other day forming it up. Huh? So do you have a magnet? No, you got a spare one maybe? I think so. Okay. So today's four day. Concrete's here. Put a little color in the concrete today. We've got our rebar mat tied in. We've got our ISO strip up and we're ready to go. Wow, brand new boots. Awesome, man. Alright, just looking for a come along. Can run it run it easy please. Or show Joe like how to do and what to do. Yeah. I'm gonna go grab the hook so we can hook it instead yep. of pull it by hand. So you gotta be careful not to ride the house. Yeah. We're basically just gonna try to spread it up to the top of the form and yeah, top form and start on it. Dark, eh? Not any bad. That's pretty like good. It's dark gray. <laughs> Trying to say work smarter. Smarter, not harder. Yeah. yeah, back a little bit too. Yeah, to the board. I'll be good for a minute. I'm gonna pull you out, pull you in the next one. So you're saying it's about six, six foot? Yeah, probably between a five and a six, yeah. yeah. Oh, I gotta get him to unlock this before he moves. Yeah. Hold up! Oh, oh, oh! There we go. Don't really need to, oh, <laughs> don't really need to raise it. That's okay. Down a little bit, please. Okay. Yeah. So this is what we call raking the concrete. Yep. Puddling, raking. He's magging. Call that magging. Probably good right there. Can I pull your head a little bit, please? Yeah, we always mag around the edges before yeah. we screen. You've probably seen that on oh, a lot yeah. of videos. Right? Yep. Gives us something to go by. If it won't stay on its own, we'll just push a little creed up against it. Unlock it, please. It just, I should be able to kick it that way a little bit. Down to the nitty gritty.
How are we doing, Joe? Okay? Good. Yeah. Living the dream. You lock that, please. I'm gonna go grab my scraper. I think it's gonna be perfect. Just pull up and wash right there, I think. Pull yeah. Up, wash right I think so. Huh? I can just make it. You guys just use this little mag, just to tap the edges. Yeah, sometimes you mag. Sometimes we'll grab a hammer. Sometimes, like right here, I might just do this. Just help to settle up together. Just to con consolidate it. Yeah. We do have a little. We call it a pencil vibrator from DeWalt. Sometimes we'll vibrate it. It's a little overkill for this. Yeah, I've seen them use them like pools or like deeper areas where you want to get it in there. But... Yeah. Perfect. We waste any today. No. <laughs> All right, let me show you something over here. <clears throat> one thing that's one thing that's kind of hard to pick up on the video is when you whenever you bow float, whenever you start and start, start and stop, there's always like a little what I call a dimple or a divot. Yep. It's just impossible not to do it. So the key is not to make it too dramatic. And I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So if I'm if I'm going here, I gotta obviously change the pitch of the bull float to bring it back, right? Yep. Without digging in. So when I do that, I don't want I don't want to pull it up way high, or I'm gonna tip that front end right in, right? And it's gonna make it hard to finish later on. So I just want to do this barely as much as possible, like that. Just like gravity kind of, and just leave a little bit. Even though you can't see it, there's still one of these going on back there. Yeah. And if you leave that, especially out in the sun, when you come back to finish, now you gotta fill all that in by hand. And it's the same when I go back this way, it leaves one. So just when you know, when you whenever you bow float and you just want to be careful. So what we'll do, we'll go back like after I get that bow floated, I'll go back by hand and mag that out, whatever I can reach. I can't reach that. But I might be able to run the bow float this way, up that wall, to help with some of that. Gotcha. You know what I mean? You try to make everything as flat as possible. Try to get it as perfect as possible. Especially if you're finishing by yourself. Yeah. You know, because that, that would be a lot of work trying to get all that out and have the concrete being ready to stamp at the same time. So what, if you want to come behind me, yep. you, you got your mag? I do. And don't worry about messing things up because we can fix it. Whatever you do right now, we can fix. Yep. So just come behind me and just kind of slowly that smooth right. that out. And I'll show you how I would do it real quick. Because I don't want you I don't want you like doing it thinking you got to be perfect here. I just, I just want to fix that. See it? Yeah. See it in spot. The, yeah. So I'll just run that back and forth a little bit like that. Yeah, See how that takes it out? Maneuver and try to skip more in. Nah, it'll just flatten out. Almost like a self -level. So just kind of back and forth. Nice and easy. Follow the bull float guy. Usually the bull float guy does that afterwards and just smooth it out. We just want it, we want to get it to as close to being ready to finish as we can. So I'm just gonna. I don't want to leave like a big, see that line? Yeah. I don't want to leave like a huge line there either. So 
So if I if I do, I'll just step over it like that and just smooth it. Right. This makes life, life easier an hour from now. It saves you in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, don't don't try to get it perfect. Like don't try to be us. We can come back and touch up what you're doing. You're just trying to get the hang of things. That's what I like. The attention to detail. There you go. That's nice right there. Yeah. Tell you another thing, Joe. What we like about this, what we like about this bull float with the rounded edges versus square. Like if if that if that was square, right? You'd have these points. Yep. It would leave a lot deeper line than what I'm leaving. So if you get into this and you, you get to where you're going to buy a bull float, I'd definitely it's buy one rounded. with the rounded edges. It's going to make your finishing look. There's hardly any lines there. See that? Oh yeah. We're gonna go back over this by hand and mag it all out before so we. So it's always like little imperfections, like pits and holes. Yeah. We're not trying to fill that. No, in right now. no. You okay. just you just be wasting time right now. Yeah. And okay. what you're doing there is perfect. That's perfect. Just leave it like that. We'll come back after the concrete firms up a little bit. We're gonna go right back over it anyway. One more thing, please. Thank you, sir. Cool. Yeah, let me get you a little bit more on that. All right, so that's gonna do it for the pour. We'll probably got, I don't know, probably got about an hour. We'll come back and check it in probably 30 minutes, see if it's ready. We got a mag float that out, and then it should be ready to stamp. We got Ashler slate stamps going today. We'll use a clear liquid release, so pretty easy to get it stamped today. At least, at least for us it is. And then tomorrow we'll come back. We'll wash it, clean it. We're unsure yet if we're going to do groove joints today or saw joints, so we'll get that figured out. And then uh, tomorrow's wash day, strip day, and then come back the following day to seal it, and then that'll be done. So we'll get back to you here in about 30 minutes. It's nothing fancy, but it's like they you take your lodge and they cook for you, you go out and they put you on the turkey. Yeah, got it into a point where I knew it couldn't go anywhere unless it flew into a piece of wood. So I sat here and I just kept calling it and I knew the phones had very fast and very fast. We walked out, stuck these down, and we're going to all healed inside the skin. Yeah, that's the one that I had on the other side. Yeah, that's crazy. The skin is healed right over on the Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. 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 Feels more gummy, that's for sure, right? Yeah. So no press Which is water, what we want. Yeah, yeah. We don't want that. Yeah. yeah. So this doesn't really have to be perfect, right? Nope. Just trying to fill in any holes and gaps. Nope. Yeah. See how? This is fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just no big lines. Which is good for the right? Hey guys, so I just first thing I want to say is, you know, if this stuff interests you and you want to try to learn some of this stuff, but you just don't know how, um, you can take my train in the concrete undergrounds down below. I also have a, just a standalone stamp concrete course that'll teach you kind of all the basics about what we're doing here. Kind of what we're doing with Joe here, the guy in the blue sweatshirt today. He's he learned he went in the concrete underground. He's he learned as much as he could in there, and then he wanted to actually come work with us for a few weeks. So he drove up here from Ohio. To get a little bit of hands-on training with us, you know, in a, in addition to the concrete underground. So in, in there, you know, I got multiple jobs just like this one that I train you on and teach you, you know, when to start stamping, the process. Basically, what we're doing right here, you know, is just, it is a little bit of process. There's quite a bit of detail to it to get it to look right. So you should have a little bit of background if you're going to try to stamp a small patio at your house or something like that. Be a good idea to get just a little bit of a background on, you know, just how we do it as uh, people that do it every single day. Quite a few tips and tricks in there about, 
you know, just making sure things come out as, as good as possible. Definitely does take some experience to get really good at it, but you could learn enough in there to at least do your own small patio, I think. You'd be just fine. So as we're getting going here, you know, we, we, uh, we like to run the stamps one certain way when we lay them down up against the house like this. And that way we get all the grooves and stuff, especially when we're using a national slate like this. We minimize cutting in grooves by hand by laying them a certain way. And these stamps only go together one way. So once you start laying one down, they're all going to lay down the same way with that notch going the same way. That's just the way these go together. Some of them you can just put down random and it doesn't really matter. But this pattern right here is pretty, they're pretty strict around how they go down. <laughs> so if you get one in the wrong way, then um, it, it kind of messes things up a little bit and you're going to kind of have to fix that. But even with a small little patio like this 8x25, there's quite a bit of, you know, there's quite a bit of stamping to do as far as if, if it's something you're going to try to tackle yourself, boy, you're really going to be hustling between, you know, getting the edges rounded, getting the surface magged out, getting your release on, getting your, all your stamps down, tamping them, picking them up, moving them. So, I mean, you only have a certain amount of time to get from one end to the other before the concrete's too hard. So you'd really be hustling a little bit. And you can see how we're cutting in, making sure the grooves all look good between all the the slate stones. Sometimes you do have to touch them up by hand, so there's some certain tools you can use for that. And then we even have these roller stamps we use to even touch up part of the surface. If we don't think we got enough texture on there with the actual stamp itself, we roll more texture on the surface using the roller. Just maybe some things that a lot of people don't do that we really pay attention to the details and do because because we've been stamping for over, you know, 25 years. Now this stayed soft enough so we didn't actually have to use a tamper and tamp the concrete. We could just use the weight of our bodies to press on it. So that, that kind of makes it nice sometimes not having to pound that tamper in the surface. But if, you know, if you're gonna do stamping, you definitely should have one of those because if this was in the sun, We'd probably be using it here at the end just to make sure we got the same type of texture as we did when we started. Well, that finishes us up for today and we'll let this harden up. We'll come back, saw it in the morning, wash it, teak wash it, put an, an additional color to it. And uh, then we let it dry up for, you know, a day or two if the, if the weather's really good and we can come back, get the sealer on it. And then that finishes up the project. You know, we'll strip the forms off tomorrow too. But that's what it looks like after today. And then after we were all done doing that other stuff, this is what the final product came out looking like. So it, it does lighten up quite a bit. And then you teak wash it with the black teak. And then that's what it looks like.